Welcome to the Friday Breakdown. We've got a real bloodbath, and I'm not talking about the Trump uh, slip-up, I guess. If, if you want to call it a slip-up, I don't know if it was a slip-up or not. But uh, bloodbath has been trending all week on Twitter, and then this case popped up uh, from Stockton Police Department, which is one of the bloodiest cases we've covered. We got this from Police Law News, first posted this, and um, we were going to have him on today to help us break it down, but he is actually traveling, I think, to like college. Colorado or so, I don't know. He's traveling somewhere. He couldn't make it. He's going to come on in the next week or two. But this is a very gruesome, bloody, sad case. To help break it down, though, I have a police officer from the Orlando area, Tyler, from the Anti Hero Podcast, to help me break it all down. Today's show brought to you by ghostbed.com forward slash Wolfpack, factormeals.com forward slash Wolfpack 50 for 50% off, and the wellness company. Hit it, Joshua. The growing calls across the nation to defund the police. To end- policing as we know it. Off the charts violence in New York City. 11 people shot in just eight hours on Sunday. This is Sunday. about the police officers, officers who every single day put on that uniform and they run towards danger when we run away from it. Guns up, giddy up, everybody. It's Friday. Listen, it's going to be a good day. You know, I know it's going to be a good day. Uh, because today I actually got a message that we were going live from YouTube. So I don't know what's going on. I've been a subscriber to my own show for years now. I had the little red bell clicked, but it will never tell me uh, that we that we are live. So maybe maybe it's a new a new leaf that's turned over. A um, couple of things really quick. John D. Wait, no, hang on. Yes. John D. I don't know his whole name. and I Well, I do know his whole name, but I don't know if he wants me to tell you his whole name. Um, just got sworn in to a law enforcement agency in Florida. I want to say congratulations to him. We also have somebody in our live chats here that says that they just got picked up by the Alaska State Patrol or State Troopers. Uh, so congrats to him. If you could find that message and throw it up for me there, dead leg, I would appreciate it because I don't know who that was. Look, the live chats are already lively before the show. It was Wesley. Wesley says, good morning. A little update on me. I got accepted by... The Alaska State Troopers, and I fly on April 1 to start. Dude, that's huge. What an iconic, legendary uh, agency or department or state to work for. Uh, Really cool stuff, man. Be safe. Be deadly. I mean, gosh, everything out there in Alaska wants to kill you. Kudos to you, homeboy. Uh, Proud of you. And uh, if there's anything that you need from us, maybe you get on field training. Maybe you're a listener right now, and you've got that really cool field training officer, and you have a really stupid question, and you know he's going to shame you for it. Um. Instead, save yourself, save your ego and DM us at failure to stop or me at Eric Tanzi official. Or if you want the real nerdy answer, follow Deadleg on Instagram, our producer, because he always knows the law to a T. I will probably give you what I would do, which may not be the right thing to do. Um, but Deadleg will definitely tell you the right thing to do and why you should do it. But anyway, uh, we're always here for you guys. And anytime we get these messages that you guys are joining law enforcement, we always want to say congratulations. Also, Bosco, the new granddaddy, uh, granddaddy Bosco. There he is holding the new baby. Who's your baby? Who's your baby? Uh, congratulations there, Bosco. Uh, we're proud of you there. A lot of other people in the chat. So today, low run pot roast Malone is up in here. David J is up in here. Marines bloodbath today, uh, joining us live. Michael Hendricks. So thank you guys so much. Tyler S. Uh, list goes on. Thank you guys for being here today. Uh, today's case, Robert Anthony Cruz versus the Stockton police department and a very gruesome, uh, bloody bloodbath is probably going to get us taken down off the of YouTube. So before it does that, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and go and log on to uh, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're downloading your podcast. Give us a five-star rating and review. It's free. Um, And then if you want to help out, if you want to help keep everybody on this staff that provides you five free shows a week to keep first responders informed and entertained, you can join our Patreon. It's three dollars. It's less than a cup of coffee a month. Don't be a slouch. There's tons of extra content on there. Lots of true crime stuff. Also got uh, Jay Rama and Johnny a little a little boost in pay because of the uh, influx of of, uh, Spotify no Patreon listeners. So we appreciate that. And it goes to a good cause. and then uh, one more thing for housekeeping before we jump into this beautiful case. Uh, our political commentator on our Wednesday show, conservative Anthony, who has 1.4 million and growing subscribers on Instagram, lots of funny content. But um, as you know, he's with the official Patriot gear.com and they have a conservative ant line. They have the tropical Florida line. 
that just dropped this week. Um, you can use that promo code ant, but this is the Patriot tropical Patriot line. Oh dude, it is rad right up my alley. It's got that Hawaiian almost has that kind of, um, what do they call those? The, the jump out boy. What do they call it? The, uh, Aloha shirts. Yeah. The Aloha shirt boys. Maybe we can't say that on YouTube cause it'll get it kicked off. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know, the boys that wear the Aloha shirts. This is kind of like a Aloha shirt, t-shirt ask. Um, definitely, gun bunny special so head over to official patriot gear also red pill threads working with them on getting night shift tsi back up and going head over to red pill threads and then also refracted wolf apparel you shouldn't really be wearing any other clothes other than the brands that support you and are owned by people like you so refracted wolf apparel uh red pill threads and official patriot gear.com you know guys like that uh Relentless Defender, they don't sponsor our show at all, and I haven't got any gear from them, but I still dig their their stuff, and Mike the Cop works really tight with those guys, so any of them support it. Nine Line Apparel is out there, Black Rifle, you know, you know all the goods, all the brands that make you, basically make you an operator when you wear their t-shirts. Uh, speaking of Refracted Wolf Apparel, the owner is right here with me, Tyler, wearing the Memento Mori shirt. Just rad, very dark, very punk rock of you. Is it punk rock or heavy metal? I don't know, man. Probably, uh, probably a mix of both. It's, it's like neon purple and neon green. I'm pretty sure it glows in the dark. My, when when they made it, the artist put it on there, and uh, Ooh, I saw dope. it. I was like, dope, man. So, yeah, I really like that. I really like that. Oh, uh, it's good to have you on here to break down this case. I hope you're ready for it. I hope you didn't eat a lot because this one's going to make you go. Ugh. Now, listen, when, I go ahead. When you sent it to me, it was hard to watch. And very rarely are things hard to watch. But like, it's not like that. It was it was like I didn't really see it as gross, but it was like real. It was like yeah. what I thought about was that guy could have been sipping a coffee four minutes prior. Just smoking yeah. and then running into that. It's like, man, it's fucking crazy. Dude, well, I, I had a story exactly for this moment. Now, I told you guys about the book and, and how it's going, and, and we've got this great book deal. And I told you kind of the hiccups. I haven't got it. We've got it solved, but I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. Hopefully, like, look, I'm, I'm telling it's any day. Could be the day that they're like, all right, we're good to go. Everything's great. Legal is fine. Rip away. And then you guys are going to get the full load of it and you guys are going to love it. But um, I think we're adding this story to the book now. Uh, and I, I can't tell you why it's being added to the book now, but it's part of that. I'll tell you later. Oh, it's so annoying, isn't it? I feel annoying even saying that. But it's crazy because I have been having to relive this story, which I had forgotten until this case and i called them and i was like i've got the story i've got i remember the story you can take that chapter out and replace it with this chapter and they shouldn't be removing the other chapter but fucking woke america dude it's too the story i put in there was too real it was too you know and, and people are gonna see it the wrong way because perception is reality these days if you if you didn't get the memo so even though the story perceives to be one way it finishes a totally different way any hoosers we'll get into it but it this exact thing that we're going to break down made me think of this story which is now going in the book and uh i'll probably tell it to you here in a second before i do though uh what's the bloodiest scene that you've ever had to to take <laughs> dude it's had nothing to do with crime it was a dialysis bleed or something. What? It came, somebody had something in their arm medically. And yeah. It came out at Universal Studios and it looked, I was like, how is this person even alive? There was blood. And it was like the, it was probably a 10 by 10 pool of blood on the ground because their, their shit came out. I, like it was insane. That was, that was technically the bloodiest thing I've ever encountered. That is nuts. Okay, so I was getting gas at our public gas pumps. I mean, private gas pumps owned by the city, fenced off. You have to have an ID to get in. So I don't know if that's public or private, but it's owned by the city of Raleigh, the city gas pumps, which I never go to. I usually just go to any rando and use the little city credit card to get gas in my gas in my cop car. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go over to the gas pumps. It's safe. It's secure. Um, this was like 1130 
at night, maybe like 1045 to 1130, something like that at night. I was feeling real lazy. It was beautiful. It was spring ish. It was um, full moon almost, you know, the loom was great. The city looked pretty. And, um, I put my gas pump in and then I, as I, you know how it goes, right? Like you put your gas nozzle in, you put the little clicker in to like, let it pump. You go and you sit back in your car and you start working on your last report or your FBI profile forms, all the, uh, you know, annoying bullshit paperwork that one has to do when they are a law enforcement officer. So I'm sitting in my car and I get lost in this report that I'm writing. And I mean, I'm just like, I'm on a roll and I'm like, I'm going to finish it. Fuck it. And I hear the chikunk. And so the gas pump is done. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So I end up typing for like another 10 or 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden, attention, all Southeast Raleigh units stabbing in progress at the such and such hotel, Capitol Boulevard. I am literally a one minute jog to this hotel. I mean, it's across the street from where I'm sitting like a four lane intersection. And I'm there and I'm like, stabbing it. I'm right here. So I open up my door to try to listen to see if I can hear the screaming. I slam my door, throw my car into drive. Bam, pow. I look in my rear view mirror. I've got the gas nozzle sticking out of my car. I jump out. It's the city gas pumps. There's cameras everywhere. I look at the main camera. I go, I take the thing out. I realize that it has a nipple, like an air compressor nipple on the hose is a disconnect thing. I pull it back. I slide the nipple in and it reconnects. I tug on it. I look up at the camera and I give it the praying, praying hands followed by the hand over my heart. Thank you. Oh, yes. I didn't fuck it up. I hang it up and I haul ass. I go through the gate over the railroad, I mean, over the four lane intersection, I get to a stairwell, blood all up the stairs. The blood's getting thicker and thicker. It's like coagulated blood, you know, like where it's like blood mixed with like fatty tissue, like pinky, almost like there's snot mixed into the blood. You know what I'm talking about? Very quag, quagmire-ish, quag. I don't know how, I don't know the right word here. And the blood's getting crazier and crazier. I still don't hear any screams. There's a crying girl. She's like four or five years old. She's probably like five or six actually. Cause she was, she was mentally there. She's crying. She's outside of the door standing in droplets of blood, thousands of drops of blood. I have my gun out. I don't know what's going on. I push the hotel door open. That's covered in blood, covered in blood. And then the inside of the room, there is a man in a pool of blood with pillow, holding a pillow over his stomach. And the pillow has soaked through to the top of the pillow. So he put the pillow down and the blood sopped so much of the pillow that it came through the other side of the pillow. That's how much blood the dude's pumping out. Blood everywhere. I'm calling for 911 ball. I'm like, who did this to you? He's gargling blood, trying to spit it out. Um, he, he says uh, the Mexicans is like all I can get. Um, I'm waiting for the ambulance to get there. I forget all about the girl. The ambulance comes there. They're like hustling and doing all the things. And I walk out and I, I see a door, uh, a, a door open and I'm following the blood around. There's a couple more cops there at this point. We get there and there's just a room full of Mexicans all sitting like, like they're scared to death and there's bloody Corona bottles everywhere. So the story went according to these Hispanics that were all illegals, that this dude didn't like them because they were illegals and he was being racist and he was trying to fuck with them. And he came into their room and they hit him with Corona bottles and just carved him up. And then he went downstairs to maybe like try to go call 911 or something was losing consciousness for whatever reason goes back upstairs passes out on the, and the daughter was trying to help him with this pillow and everything. Very crazy scene. Now they load him up. I'm stuck with this girl. This girl doesn't have a phone number, doesn't know who the relatives are or anything. So now I'm sitting with her in my car trying to search this guy's room. We're trying to find stuff. I put on some like a uh, TV show, like some kind of YouTube kids TV show for her. Oh, very, very little bad. girl. Yeah, she was like six. She was like, oh my god, five I, I, years old. I wasn't in the story. Okay, so I put her in my car. We're watching Dora the Explorer, and she was the one that was crouched outside of this room, like with all this blood. I mean, what a horrific event for this child! And um, I'm waiting to try to figure out. So we find out who this mom is. The mom says, "I don't want to lie to you. 
I'm too drunk to come get her. And she lived about an hour away. I almost started to cry because I, at the time, had two young children. I now have five. At the time, I had two. And I was, like, choked up about nobody loves this child. The dad that she's with in a hotel is super drunk and starting racial fights with Mexicans. The mom, wherever she's at an hour away, is too drunk. So I'm very sad. And um, I end up working it out to have the child. I take the child to another station. I drop it off with some other cops. As I'm going back to my my uh, area in the southeast of Raleigh, I am kind of just shaken up. Now it's like 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning. A car jets out in front of me, gets sideways. The driver turns around and looks at me and just takes off. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? The car's stolen. I light this car up. It tries to make a right-hand turn, misses the turn, crashes into a house, jump and run out both sides. I go after the driver. I tackle the driver uh, into a set of stairs. So there's a set of stairs to our right. I tackle them and we hit the stairs. Super. The girl, the driver, she's fucking pregnant. Like noticeably pregnant after I tackle her. She starts having like some kind of crazy labor pains. We get the ambulance out there. I'm freaking out. Am I going to jail for tackling a pregnant bitch? I didn't know she was pregnant. All I know is the car stolen and she's running from me. That happens. I get her to the hospital. We get that whole thing messed out. It is now 5 a.m. Three shootings go off on my beat because I haven't been in my beat since like 930. Now everybody's mad at me because I didn't manage my beat and I had all this other shit. So I stay till nine or 10 o'clock in the morning sitting on a crime scene, a three person shooting crime scene on my thing. Three weeks later, I get called into an office. My favorite Sergeant. He's like, Hey, sit down. And I was like, yeah, what's up? And he's got a notepad out. I'm like, he, he is like the, he's about to retire. He doesn't take the job seriously at all. And he's like, Hey man, what happened at the, the gas pumps? on what such and such street. And I said, I don't know what happened. And he's like, did you pull anybody over on the night of da, 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 da at the, the gas pumps? No. Nope. And he's like, but you were at the gas pumps. And I was like, probably not. I was like, dude, I haven't been to that gas pump in like a month or so. Um, it's been a while since I've used that gas pump. And I was like, so you got the wrong, you got the wrong dude. Cause I don't, I don't even pull cars over. That's not even in my, district. It's not even in my beat. I have no business to be there. And he's like, dude, you better, you better think real hard on what happened on this day and this time at this gas pump. And I'm going to give you one more chance to answer it, or this is going to go to internal affairs. I was like, Sarge, you're cr Dude, listen, I'm telling you, maybe you can like refresh my memory. I did not pull any cars over or arrest anybody in or around those fucking gas pumps. And he's like, did you leave the gas pumps in a hurry? And right when he said that, I was like, like a month ago, yes, I did. And then I told him the whole story. And I said, yeah, I ripped the gas pump up, but I put it back together. I looked at the camera. I did one of these. I did one of those. And he's like, why didn't you tell anybody? And I was like, I forgot that that even happened. I, I didn't even know that happened. And he's like, well, just to let you know, they've made a new policy that you can't leave the gas handle in your car unattended. And they took all those little clicker things off of the gas pumps. So you have to sit there and hold it. I didn't know. I Because all those traumatic events happened so fast that that part erased from my brain. And he was like, well, I have to write this up and send it to internal affairs. I have no other. I was like, yo, that was one of the most traumatic nights of my life. And you guys are going to try to fuck me over on a goddamn gas pump that I like apologize to the gas pump gods. And it's not even broken. So when it got to internal affairs, they checked the tape and they saw me like do the like you know so I knew I was telling the truth but yeah that was the bloodiest scene I ever worked and one of the most chaotic uh events of my career um and, and I got kind of a little bit of a hiccup there for ripping a gas nozzle out so it goes to show you that even if you're pumping gas this call can happen and you're right like you have to turn it all on now my case, nothing in comparison to this case. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's start with the 911 call. This is from the Stockton Police Department investigations on YouTube. Um, I'm going to fast forward to the actual 911 call. We don't need all the other bullshit there. Go ahead and hit play. 
to 911 on the address of emergency. I have, a, I have a little girl over here saying that her mother is getting stabbed by her dad. Okay, where? Hang on. Where are you? Ma'am, hang, hang on. What's the address? Because I can't understand you, so take a deep breath. Okay, so you, right. Okay, so who's telling you that somebody's being stabbed? My little girl is right here in front of me. She said her mom and dad, her dad is stabbing her mom. Hang on. So where does it, where does the little girl come from? What a what a part we gave me off. Um, are you the one in front? Yeah, her kid. This one right here? She said they're in front of I know the lady. She's got a bunch of kids. Okay. Okay. What's uh, what's the mom's name? There he is. There he is. Officer. Uh, what is your mama's name? Huh? What is it? How old is she? She's old enough. She's 13. What's the mom's name? I swear to God, it is the mom's name. Oh, okay. Mom, mom is and what's, what's the address that the mom lives? Uh, she lives right, in we the can fast forward all that because I don't want to hear the paper the address. Um, so that's your 911 call in a nutshell. A uh, 13-year-old girl runs to an adjacent apartment and this is what's going to go out to the cop. So it's third party. Um, yeah, a, a lot of people, I never knew this for a long time, even a couple years in as a cop, I, until I asked. Like, while because you listen to this and if you're not in law enforcement or dispatch, you're like, this all seems like not pertinent information. But in all reality, as soon as they get the address, the stabbing call goes out. Yeah. She, she pushes it out to the dispatcher that sends it to the cops. And then once the call taker has everything, they go in progress and they, they cut out her. So there's one less middleman. And now the, the person can talk to the caller and then talk straight to the responding cops. So, cause I, like, I, even I was like listening, like what the fuck 13, who cares? But in all reality, there are black and whites now racing to that scene so. yeah they've already been in process to that scene probably 30 seconds 40 seconds before this even started and then as that cop is heading to the scene this woman you can hear her typing while the girl's talking so how old are you 13 like these are all notes that are going to get added to the call that the cop can go for and why it's important is because when you're writing that report or you're going to court two or three years later you can go back to that call history see that it was a 13 year old girl you can see that it was you know an adjacent apartment there's a lot of information that can kind of help you jog your brain um, because you don't know if it's going to be a critical incident like this one turned out to be a very, very critical incident. So the cops know third party uh, reporting of a stabbing going on. Now, um, I, I, I mean, is, is stabbing the number one murder utensil in the world, or at least in the United States? I think I've heard that. I think I've heard I, that. I, I know that like more people, uh, Josh, will you will you uh, fact check me on that? Our producer, Dead Like Media. Uh Keep going ahead. Uh, Google Googling it for us about uh, stabbings, but I think stabbings are like one of the main causes of deaths. Um, I know for around us, we have a lot more people in the city I worked in die from stabbings than they actually did from shootings. Um, and I'm guessing that's just because of like the amount of trauma, like a bullet is a small hole and leaves a small path, whereas a knife, you know, leaves like a three inch path and there's uh, lots of things. So anytime we had a stabbing call, it's always very, very serious. And stabbing is such a passionate way to kill somebody. Um, it's such a, it's, it's such an odd, and, and I have been to many calls where the knife is still in a person. And when you see, you know, when I see somebody that's shot, I don't feel anything. I don't, I'm just like, you okay? You know, like let's get some pressure on that. When I walk in and see a knife stuck in somebody's thigh, I'm like, Oh God. Oh, that hurts. Most people don't even like when they get shot. And you show up, they're almost as confused as you are. Because it takes a minute. They're like, my shot? And then they're like, and then obviously the, the gunshot, some gunshots like aren't bleeding like you think they would. No, no. Well, most so of them like, aren't. The and then you get there and you're like, dude, you're shot. And then you start where a stabbing is like, like you said, just a bloody mess and somebody's screaming. Yeah. Because they, they experienced it. They're like, ah. Worldwide, it looks like it's, um, I'm not. I don't know how deep this is, the study is, but according to the study, 10% of all homicides globally are caused yeah. by stabbing. Okay. What Only 
but that's globally the entire globe okay is that the highest though uh south africa well, is the highest with no, 16.95 no, 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 no. stabbings wait what's the number one cause of death uh, well being globally bad. it would be guns because you think about all the civil wars and shit and like all the mass murders where they just line them up and hose them down with a machine gun uh, so like globally I, mean, I don't know um i'd rather know like america state side wise i yeah i don't know um but so going back to what you said, um, yeah, it, it's very painful. And it's like, I don't know. There's just something like it, it hurts your stomach when you see somebody with a knife inside of them. Like, I, I don't know. Like I, I, I've seen, I, I, the one that comes to my mind the most is this woman had a, had a cake knife stuck in her thigh, like her upper thigh. And I mean, it was way in there. And I was just like, Oh my, I just, I couldn't stop looking at it. And just like, you know, when you get those like knots in your stomach or your stomach's kind of turning, you know, like on a roller coaster, I had that. Like the whole, every time I looked at it, my stomach was like, Woo! you know, like. I just uh, thought about that scene from Talladega Nights where he's like, yes! "I don't feel it." And they're like, "You got a knife in your leg." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, oh, oh!" <laughs> just right, what do we got? Knives are one thousand six hundred and thirty uh, were used in twenty twenty two. So this okay. is a graph that. So they're third. Okay, behind third. firearms and firearms not stated. Oh, I don't know what firearms not stated is. I, that's well, basically, firearms is number one and stabbing is number two. two. Yep. Essentially. Gotcha. Um, yeah, very dangerous. Knives are, knives are crazy. All right, so the cops go into this call. I don't know, for you, if you're getting a third-party stabbing call, I'm kind of like... I'm just geared up. Like I know what I'm getting into. I know it's going to be bloody and I know it's going to be gross. So is that, is that kind of your take when you're going to a stabbing call? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, but for some reason going to a stabbing call, I'm less on alert as far as like when I go to a shooting, you know, I'm moving up to that person, but I'm more concerned about somebody else. You yeah. know, my gun's out and I'm not putting my gun away until, I get other people there. A stabbing, like, it's just like, holy shit. Cause you know, most right. of the, the knives in them are not in them. And, and I just, for some reason, feel like the scene's over with. And that person that stabbed that person is not going to be standing there. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're like sure. in the gas station that they just yeah. stabbed somebody in the parking lot. But yeah, I love that. They don't know what to do afterwards. <laughs> like, uh, I guess I'll get a Gatorade. Uh, <laughs> You guys got beef jerky. Um, so, okay. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and play the dash cam footage. This is going to escalate. Actually, before we do the dash cam footage, let's take a quick, quick shout out to our sponsors. Ghostbed.com forward slash Wolfpack. Ghostbed. Sleep so good it's scary. And you're going to need a ghost bed after you watch this because it's going to be hard to sleep after you see this. Uh, I'm giving you your warnings now that it's gory. It's gross. Don't have kids in the room after this ad read because it's going to get gnarly. Uh, the only way I can sleep through all of the things that I've seen, all the, the crazy deaths I've seen is because I have a ghost bed and a ghost bed pillow and the cooling sheets and the toppers. And right now, ghost bed is offering first responders and friends of first responders 50% off site wide. They've been with us for like three or four years now. It's been an incredible journey with them. Um, use the promo code Wolfpack, get you 50% off. These are meds made in the good old USA. Sorry. USA. Sorry. Support those who support you. Mental wealth, mental health, and mental wellness starts with a good night's sleep. That's why we are proud to be with ghostbed.com. And also, um, by the way, it's 0% down, 0% financing. And that's that's even if you have uh, refracted wolf apparel credit, um, you can afford one of these ghost beds. Uh, but I, me, mental health and mental wellness. Uh, because of a good night's sleep and a good diet. Uh, we got factormeals.com. This is meal planning. Meals that are fresh and never frozen delivered right to your door so that you don't have to go out and do the grocery shopping. You don't have to go out and uh, buy all your Rubbermaid totes and look for the lids and all the whatnots to come home and cook each meal randomly and do all your meal prep and meal planning. Also, the, you just go on to, to factormeals.com forward slash Wolfpack50 and you can look at their hundreds of menu items. Um, 
from breakfast, dinner, lunch menus. They've got smoothies and shakes. They've got, they got it all calorie conscious. They got protein heavy. They got uh, vegan and vegetarian. They got all the meals that you could possibly want. Head over to factormeals.com. Use that promo code. And look, you want to get jacked like me? You want to get swole? Uh, don't wait for the new year. You got a long time to start that diet. Spring is here, essentially effectively and uh summer is right around the corner so get that bod in shape baby get on a get on a meal plan go to factormeals.com forward slash wolfpack 50 search your meal planning today and then wellness company super super stoked to be with these guys because april 8th the big giant shadow eclipse it's just causing mayhem all over the place and that the national guards are being enacted it's making a cross over the country there's conspiracy wazoos out there it's just like another y2k moment maybe it happens maybe it doesn't you know maybe maybe it's super nuts that's the end of the world maybe it's not either way let's get that peace of mind um the first thing that the zombies are going to go after are the cvs is the walgreens the Eckerd drug stores whatever uh the drug stores because they're going to want them drugs. So what the wellness company does is pre-prescribes you your monochloral antibodies, your ivermectins, your penicillins, your travel uh, things. If you're going camping, you can set up a pre-prescribed uh, package to wherever you're traveling to. So you got your malaria pills. You got all the things. But listen, guys, this is getting ahead of a pandemic, an epidemic to where you don't have a rush on the drug stores. This is developed by Dr. McCullough, Dr. Drew, several other the famous doctors that you've all seen on Joe Rogan and that you know of and you've seen their TV shows. Um, matter of fact, we're going to get Dr. Drew on the podcast. I just was in emailing with their people today, this morning. So um, proud to be with the wellness company. Do not... Do not wait on this. It's kind of expensive. Use the promo code. It's going to give you a discount. But you got to remember, you got to keep your family safe in these end times. If you believe that these are the end times, if you don't think that the uh, the grid's going to shut down or something great, there's always a possibility, right? Like I'm at 75%. I think the grid goes down in the next uh, 10 months. I just don't think the election is going to happen or they're going to allow it to happen. I think if Donald Trump continues on the train that he's going, I say late October, this is my Tamstrodamus prediction. They're going to just shut it all down. They're going to take their ball and go home. That's just me. Listen, I'm a C minus student. You don't have to listen to me. Maybe I'm crazy, but this is why I'm up on the wellness company now so that if all that shit goes down, at least I know I got all my prescription, all my meds for my entire family. You jump on like a teledoc sitch. They explain it all to you. And you got it. So if you're a survivalist, if you're a prepper, this may be one of the most important things that you have in your uh, in your repertoire. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get to the gory fun of it. Um, here we go. Body worn camera. This is again coming from the Stockton Police Department. By the way, you can hit play if you um, try this to look is up. Extremely graphic. Right. If you try to look up like Stockton police shooting, uh, I didn't know this about Stockton, but there's like a million police shooting. <laughs> That's so true. I did the same thing. <laughs> but yeah. Right. I was like, damn. Oh, like, no, do you guys no, shoot somebody no, every day? No. <laughs> Great. I, it, Josh, how long did it take us to find this? I had to send police law news. Um, uh, I had to send him a, a message, a private message. It was like, dude, where did you even find this? I can't find it anywhere. Um, and there's a f lot of shootings in Stockton to go through. So he actually sent me the right one. But uh, I don't know anything about Stockton, California. Do you? Uh, I just know that the Diaz brothers from USC are there. Stockton, motherfucker. That's what they always Ooh, say. What else? Is uh, is there any famous raptors, rappers? Why you hitting play on this? Dead like, give me some Stockton, California facts for after the body cam footage. Here we go. So cops getting out of his cop car. Really nice apartment complex. It's not, doesn't look like Section 8 government housing or anything like that. It's a very beautiful, um, really nice. What's apartment. up, hon? And Angie walked up to her and told her that her father is 9 11 and her mother. Go ahead and push the top right where now. At, where at? Push up now. That cop got out and tried to be cool, like yeah. like we all do. Combat, yeah. breathe. I'm a cool cop. Yeah. Like just stay calm. And then you got this 13 year old girl barefoot, and you can just tell that he. I can almost feel his like compassion at this moment because she starts to run. She's visibly distraught, and she starts to run in the direction, and the cop starts to run too. And yeah. you can just tell that this to me amps him way up. Like and he went just... from. Go ahead. I was just thinking that if it had been an adult, sometimes you might run just so you don't look bad, but you don't feel it. But there's something like triggering about like children and like in distress, like you start losing that composure that you right. tried so hard to get out of the car with. 
it just goes out the fucking window. Yes. And now listen to his voice. It's kind of crackly. Like, I mean, this isn't an instant. This dude went from like cool, calm and collect street cop dude. just doing the Lord's work to, Oh shit. Um, respectfully, like respectfully, like I'm fine with it. Go ahead. Hit play. Where at? Where at? Are they inside? Yeah. Is out. It strikes the doorknob. It's locked. But it's not. Oh, oh, you're you're here. Let me ask a quick Look at question. that. It looks like a haunted house. It looks like a haunted house. Yo, what? <laughs> Just bloody, uh, this bloody That's zombie. The first arm? thing you see is a fucking arm come out and smear blood on the outside of the door. I mean, lots of blood <laughs> smears on this door. Imagine this, Tyler. It's nighttime. Like, thank God this is the middle of the day with, like, clear blue skies. Imagine if it was, like, night and, like, kind of drizzly rainy. Oh, there's no way I would leave. Now, let me ask you this really quick, because he checks the door. It's locked. He checks it again. It's still locked. Um, You can tell that you can hear on the body camera that it sounds like somebody is unlocking the door. That's why he checks it that second time. But you can hear screaming from two different people in that building. And you can, like, if you listen to the audio listeners out there, just... just so you gotta be apartment. All right, stop. You heard that screaming, right? Did you hear that in the audio, guys? You you chat, you live chats out there. Did you guys hear that? Um, you know that like somebody's being stabbed at death scream. Guns and cafes in here. Michael Hendricks, folk. You guys, let me know if you can hear it. Um, do you kick that door at that moment? I was just thinking that, and he's probably thinking exactly what every cop is thinking is that is looks like a pretty secure fucking door. This isn't a hood house door. This is a, an apartment, maybe a newer apartment. And you risk, I've seen it happen. You go to kick a door. If you don't have a lot of door experience, like door kicking experience, which a lot of cops don't, I don't have a lot of it. I don't think I've ever really kicked in a solid door. I felt like really bro. So that door, I was just about to tell you, I kicked in an apartment door like that. And I had to switch to the the mule kick on it. I kicked it so hard all over the place that we could like you could get your arm in the bottom of the door, but the lock never broke. Like yeah. I was kicking it to the bottom of the door, was bending, and and it just kept bending, but the door never came off of the steel frame. I've seen dudes get uh uh stress frac like uh not stress frac not shin splints but like crack like break their shin because of the uh the cracks from the impact to try to kick indoors to hyper extended knees. Um, you probably wouldn't care in the moment at all, but you know, you kick that door and you hyper extend your knee and blow your ACL or something. Now you got to do that. And I, I just feel like that's what he's trying to avoid. Sure. But I feel like he was probably about to kick it in and then it, the bloody arm came out. Dude, you know that panic though when it sets in where you know you need to get in there right now yeah. and you're like, how am I going to get in there? You know, I, I think about that with Uvalde. Um, you know, that's why I'm like very empathetic towards Uvalde. I can't imagine the emotions that I'd be going through being that I have five freaking kids. Bro, I don't know what I, I don't know what I would do if I saw dead children and I would just, I probably would, I'd like to say I wouldn't panic and go crazy, but I might panic and go crazy. Um, and in this case right here, like I know I've been in a situation kind of like this, all the screaming on the other side, lucky for me, the door was unlocked and we just opened the door and went in. And um, this woman was just getting brutalized by another woman. Uh, it was a lesbian uh, type situation, domestic. I, I but I remember, it. it was pretty brutal. She clawed the girl's face with her fingernails, started from the top, scratched down and gathered all of the skin and it built up around the lip. So like the skin from the finger, from the, from the face was dangling like fingers off of the cheeks. I would, you know, it looked pretty painful. It wasn't very yeah. bloody, but it just what, looked what, wasn't consensual, right? No, 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 no. They were mad. They were, they were mad at each other. She was mad. She, and she kicked the door. But the, but the point is when I got to the apartment, the screaming was intense. You know, it sounded a lot like this. And I had that panic, like, Oh shit. And I pulled my gun out and I pulled a thing and I opened the door and I was like, Oh my God. And they're like, glass was everywhere it wasn't bloody like this so now at least this cop gets kind of a break from the panic because somebody opens the door for him but i was just thinking you know what if they didn't open that door what was his next i think he was gonna kick it i think he was yeah. gonna kick it yeah for sure for sure uh go ahead and hit play from here this bloody nasty <laughs> hey show me your hands hey show me your hands hey show me your hands Oh, shit, no. Get down! 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 Get down
stop right here. No, let's just play it out. Let's play it out and then we'll oh, get on the ground. 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 Twenty-two shots fired. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Wow. Get on the ground. Wow. The ground. Wow. Oh, so much more. Push stop. Push stop. Push stop. Holy Jesus. Oh my God. Uh, get it off of that screen so that YouTube doesn't kill us too much here. Um, that is so much blood. There's so much going on here. I have it's to ask so you this. It's so violent. It's so, so violent. violent. That is raw human being. That is that is animalistic human being at its like at its core right there. Just like that, seeing that, like mm, sorry. Dude, when he raises that knife like this, yeah, and that cop takes that shot, shoots him in the hand first. I think he caught him in the face too because there was a huge chunk yeah, like missing that. from his cheek. I think it went through his hand and through his cheek. Um, so let me start here. I don't know how to say this without Monday morning quarterback. And I'm only saying this because I'm ask, I'm genuinely curious. I'm asking you, so please, Stockton, please do not think that I'm sitting in this chair judging you any way, shape, or form. I think you did an amazing job. Oh, yeah, and, and let's, let's kick it off with, I don't know how I would fucking react to that. I don't know. I, no idea. I don't know. Because th here's a couple of things you have to think about as a, as a listener. That shit's going to stop you in your tracks. Your brain can't process a scene fast enough that your body can react. Yeah. And what I mean by that is you're going to be like, that's a lot of blood. That dude's got a knife. That's a lot of blood. Where's that little girl? That's a lot of blood. That's a big knife. Like that's all the things that are going through your brain, which are a lot harder to process than it sounds. My question here is, Oh, I hate asking this question. This is so bad. Would you, I'll just say it. Would you have shot him the minute you saw him? Uh, I know he, you probably could. I know this, this cop probably couldn't. Because his thought, he, he couldn't get his brain around it. But, like, let's say you know what you know now. Does he have <sighs> the knife when uh, they initially, like, when he, he initially throws did. the knife down? It looks like he throws the knife down and lunges backwards as if he just got shot. But the cop backs out. And I would have been really afraid that that dude would have slammed that door shut and locked it. Now, I'm not, I don't know if I would have been able to think that fast, to be honest with you. I don't think I would, but like, let's say like, like, so let's just play Monday morning quarterback right now. Um, that would have sucked. Right. If he would have got up and slammed that door shut. That would have sucked. Also. I mean, does he get another jab in her back? I think so. Let's play it That's again. That's what I saw. And I'm like, man, that jab is on that cop. It's, it's before. There's there. one right there. It's, Go all the way back like, to where they're inside, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, just go where he gets that door open. Oh yeah, right there. Jesus God, like that 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 is on him. And you know what? No. As a victim crawling to a cop, <sighs> you shouldn't. That victim does not deserve crawling to the police. That victim does not deserve to get stabbed again. At that point, when you see a cop, your expectation, as far as as you've ever known as your life, is that safety, that's freedom, that's that's who's going to protect me. And can you imagine staring at a cop staring at you with his gun out, able to kill the threat, and you get stabbed again? And that's and where I think that, that's where I think this warrior mindset's got to come back, dude. You got to stop with this protector mindset, bro. It, but this is all going to come from the people. It's the people have to say the the sheepdogs or the fucking refracted wolves out there. We want them to have their fangs back. I want them to go fucking hunt bad guys. I want them to. I I get I deter I deem them the responsibility and I give them my blessing as a citizen of this county, city, state to go do the Lord's work. And I don't want to be involved in the fucking process that's jamming them up. But when people in California go, oh, well, we want to police our police, 10 years later, this is what you get. And he's a fucking hero. I'm not again, we're just talking about 
we're talking about a much more broad subject now coming from this one particular incident. But the fact that she got stabbed again, I think, is a reflection on uh, how cops think today as far as can I shoot. <laughs> Joe Russo says, I'm okay with Warrior, but I will never stand for Punisher Skull. Um Joe, I when I, I I just because of my military background, the the Punisher Skull was definitely something a lot different, um, and and it meant something a little bit different. But everybody has to have uh, kind of a banner to to fly beyond. I don't I don't like the Punisher Skull. I think it was like, I mean, but you know, I like the Batman. I, I mean, well, okay, so we can argue about the Batman. Every every cop or every soldier or any warrior always. I mean, th think about Christians, right? They had to cling to a symbol, right? They cling to a cross, right? The Catholics cling to this image of Mary. Um, we all cling to some kind of symbol. You know, you had the Crusader lion um, that the Crusaders adopted. You know, they had the the lion lion heart type kind of thing going on. So, you, you know, some cops go with the Batman, but then like Batman's still a vigilante. So you not like vigilanteism. So they don't go, you know, Punisher Skulls. I, I don't have a problem with it. You know, Valhalla, you know, like nobody really wants to go to Valhalla, but it was just something to rally around. Um, I, I think that is an interesting, uh, like some, like if you had like a psychiatrist to break that down or a psychologist, I guess would be the word psychologist to break that down psychology. Like I wonder why we all have to have some kind of a banner to fly under. So I think that's where the Punisher school was. Um, and then it got taken by like all sorts of losers and idiots. But, you know, um, I had a lot of respect for, for the men who wore the Punisher skull. Um, I knew, was, I knew a whole ranger, uh, element that supported Delta. Um, and they ran the Punisher skull on all of their equipment, all of their gear. And, um, and I just have much respect for those guys. And, and they, they did some, they did the Lord's work. They did crazy. I think Matt Bass was, was part of that Ranger Battalion too, if I'm not mistaken, but, uh, Chance Davis, uh, a lot of those guys ran that. So I don't know. Um, uh, I, I do think it is cheesy now for sure, but you have to have a warrior mindset because when you go into something like this and you pause and you take that much time, I think she was stabbed one or two times. I mean, we just went back and we caught a double fisted stabbing and we weren't even going to catch that. We didn't even go back to where I saw the original yeah. stabbing. Um, and I don't know if, and this is my question here is, was he just overtaken by the scene that he didn't shoot him? Was he thinking about being in trouble? Was he thinking about, am I allowed to shoot him? Was he thinking, fuck, I don't want to be here. I don't want you. I would love to know his psychology to learn from and none of those answers are wrong i mean you don't know how you're going to be when you get there um and I, I i know what it's like to be stopped in my tracks and to be like oh shit um you know one way that i know i when i was stopped in my tracks was a case i wasn't even involved in I, I was breaking it down here where a woman ran out onto the ice to save somebody from drowning and the ice had cracked and they fell through i'm i knew in that moment i'm not that guy I'm scared of cold water. I'm scared of icy water. I don't like being cold. I'm from Florida. I don't know that I would have gotten out on that ice. I would have had to watch that dude drown to death. Yeah, I'm the same way with water. I think about it all the time. There's nothing you wouldn't do for your kids. But outside your kids, I mean, hell, even even the old lady, man. If you like let's say like uh, oh, you're at you're at the alligator exhibit and your kid falls in. You're going in. You're going in, and there's no, like, you can't not go in. That wouldn't even – anybody else falls in, like a bystander falls in, and you're like, oh, shit, you should get out of there, man. I'm not going in there. That's horrible. Yeah. I mean, I watched my partner, Red. By the way, it's Red's birthday today. Happy birthday, Red. But she uh, got a yeah, life-saving award, and I think she might have gotten a distinguished service room, which is, like, the second highest accolade you can get in the city of Raleigh. But um, she ran into a burning apartment, ran upstairs – and chucked a baby from the top stairs down. Um, the guy that she went in with bailed on her halfway up the stairs, said, Nope, fuck it, I'm out. And he got the same award. Ooh. I was there. I was not, let's break this down, Eric. <clears throat> this needs to be broken down at some point. I hate that guy too. Like I generally <laughs> hate him. Like I really don't. Like he's a piece of shit anyway. Um, never yeah. liked him. And um, but yeah, he got he got the same award she did. Or maybe he's got the life saving award and didn't get the distinguished service one, but um, yeah, he ran out uh, on her and, and she talks about it to this day. But uh, you know, I, I look back on that case too and know that like I don't think I was running into that apartment building. 
I, mean, I didn't even think to do it because I'm not a firefighter. Um, so w- let's go back to it though. Like Josh, I know, and I know this is hard to watch. I'm not, but I want to play it back because that's what we do here. We break it down. Let's go back to him going inside of this this house. Hands. Hey, shoot! Stop right here. He drops the knife and lunges back. Did he get shot right there? Can you go back? I want to listen for a shot. Did he shoot him? Because if so, then... Hey! Shoot! No, I don't think no. so. He just drops the knife. By the way, this is a Quiznart um, ceramic knife. I have the same set at home. Oh, they're so green. sharp. They're I have so the the yeah. green one that's down at his feet. Yeah, but we okay. see the bright green knife. Um, oh, mind you, mind you. And a lot of people, again, might not know this. How... Eric, how slippery is that scene right now? Oh, extremely slippery. The, probably the slippery, other than fucking dish soap that you put on the floor. Other than yeah. that, that is a very slippery scene. So him flying backwards like that, although it looks kind of weird, um, it's way more possible with the floor covered in blood. He might have tried to stand up and slip backwards. Yeah. Play it again. Let's take a look at it. Hey! Shoot! Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, exactly. He was like, whoa, and he slipped. Holy cow, we didn't even catch that. He slips, puts his hands up, though. Go ahead and play from here really quick. Oh, you shoot me down! Get on the ground! 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 All right, so stop right the- here. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's going towards the door and towards the knife that he just kicked accidentally. All that dude had to do was shut that fucking door, and you've got a really bad scenario right here. So my question being, would he be justified right now in shooting that guy? Oh, he would have been justified as soon as the guy, as soon as the guy went for even before he kicked it. When he went and got on his knees, he would have been justified all day. That scene, totality of circumstances, the nine one one call, everything that cop went through, everything that cop has seen, that guy. If he did it, just lay there like this. He, that guy's subject to being shot, a hundred percent. Yeah, um, I, you know, where I lose it here is that door. Now you guys got to remember. If you can hear that bird, I apologize. I have giant. It's kind of cool. I have giant like a- barn doors, and it's so beautiful outside that I open both barn doors. It looks it's not so a- unprofessional. It's like, but it's gorgeous after, outside here. It's gorgeous. After that awful scene that we just broke down, it's nice. To yes. So, again, it's important to know that this cop is trying to process way more than his mind is probably capable of processing. Um, coupled with what you brought up at the beginning of the show, he could have just had Chick fil A. He could have just said, Happy birthday, mom. Um, he could have just gotten off the phone with his auntie. Um, he could have just been FaceTiming his 13 year old daughter. Could hundred percent could have just found out he was a like, who knows, you know, um, could have been watching one of my stupid BJJ reels on Instagram and was laughing hysterically. He could have been in his sergeant's office being fucking chastised five minutes prior about some dumb shit. And then he turns around and he goes and has to deal with this. That, that is cop life right there. Yeah. It, this is cop life. Why it's just so in, intense. I'm gonna play it one more time from start to finish. Let you guys know how fast this goes. Um, to wrap this up, play the video one more time. He gets out so cool and collected. He kind of steps it up when he hears the radio traffic, too. So you got the girl and the radio traffic. What's up, hon? And walked up to her and told her that her father is 9/11 and her mother. Where at? Where at? Are they inside? Yeah. Hostile publications have been for milk number. So you gotta be apartment. Hey, show me your hands. Hey, pause it. Pause it. Another huge thing is the reason why he was back, and I was wondering that it was he was trying to give dispatch the apartment number. Gotcha. He, gotcha. So that explains why he was stepping back. I thought maybe it was a tactical thing if he was trying to see another window, but okay. Gotcha. All right, play it out. Don't stop. Hey! Shoot! Shoot down! Shoot down! Shoot me my head! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! 
Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get her out of here! Let's go with body worn camera too. The other thing that is not said in here, there are not only a freaking world, but there are two other kids that are present. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Do not move! Get on the ground! Do not move! Jesus. Ma'am, come over here. Do not move. Let's get her out of here. Ma'am, come over here. Now, just imagine being that other cop. We didn't even talk about him. Like, dude, you'll live with that your whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just like, I, I think they're both just so subject to the, man, I don't know if the OODA loop's the right word for it, but like. What's that repetitive? He's caught in that repetitive repetition. Like, you're on, what do you do first there? Like, I, I mean, obviously me and you right now can figure out exactly what to do and break it down. But yeah, you're like. You're showing up. You hear your buddy shooting his fucking gun off. Like that's the worst. That's it's at its worst. It's at its worst. Like it's already. You're getting out of your car, and the scene is at the worst it could be. There's a fucking shooting. So now you're running up there. You're like, okay, you got 1.5 seconds running up that sidewalk to think about maybe what's going to happen and what you're going to do. And then you turn the corner and you see that scene, and it's like. I'm like, that's my brain right now. If I saw that, I'd be like, oh, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. And I think a lot of people are like, why is he stuck in that get on the ground, get on the ground, get on the ground? He's conditioned black. Um, and and he he has every reason to be. I mean, this isn't something you train, you you don't train for this. You, you don't, this isn't something you, you, you don't, you, you don't have training for this until you get there, until you see that blood there's nothing to compare you for that except that and everybody's going to act differently and and very few people are going to be perfect you know your tim kennedy's of the world um you you know uh the, the guys that have been in the shit uh brent tucker the guys that have really been and seen some shit maybe they can work through this maybe they can everybody else no, you, you it's, and, and you get stuck in this get on the ground get on the ground and why he's stuck in that is he doesn't even know he's saying that in his brain, because his brain is thinking, I got to get a tourniquet. Tourniquet's uh, not even here's the thing, enough. Bro, here's the, thing. the assaulter mindset, you can, but the guys that you just mentioned, and, and I'm not taking anything away from Brent Tucker or Tim Kennedy, although Tim Kennedy is a liar anyways, but you get the assaulter mindset, you just eliminate that threat. You're going through the house. Anybody that shot, injured, wounded, stabbed, they're waiting until the next step. A cop you have to immediately go into caretaker and aid giver immediately. Like once you determine that you are safe. So obviously there's a, there's a shit bag dying there and then there's a victim. So the victim's going to get priority, but I mean, now is there anybody else in the house? You got to think about that. You got, there's so much going on and you're fucking, like you said, code black. You're just like, what the fuck? And it's sometimes it's good. I'm a big advocate for supervisors being out on the road. I do understand they have so much fucking paperwork. I get that. That's why they're not out there playing like they used to. They understand that. They know that. But the supervisors just randomly showing up on calls and backing you to not burn you. I don't want supervisors out there assessing, you know, costs. But, you know, a supervisor getting onto this scene, like, as quick as they can, can help as, like, I'm a supervisor. I wasn't here for the chaos. So I can think clearly and I can think the way a super, I need to think about how, all right, this girl's safe, this shit bag's detained and we're giving him aid. Now let's think about the house. And then there's all kind of crazy shit that, you know, the neighbors, is there anybody else involved? It's, it's so, it's so much. Um, and I remember being in a car chase and the car hit a church van and, and killed three people, I believe, in the church van, two girls and, a, and a, the driver. And um, and then the passenger in the car that was being chased died. And the driver went through the windshield. And uh, it was me and the guy who started the chase. And I was about 
maybe 30 seconds behind everybody um, because I had to make a left-hand turn as they passed by me at over 100 miles an hour. So it took me a hot second to catch up to everybody. And then this wreck happened. Well, the man who was uh, established the chase was stuck in the repetitive repetition. We were at the car of the suspect and he was like, drop it. Don't move. I'll shoot you. I swear to God, I'll shoot you. Drop it. Don't do it. I'll shoot you. Drop it. And I'm like yelling. I'm like, hey, man, what's he got? Because the back window had a a uh, garbage bag over it as a window because it had been knocked down. I guess they had taped it up so rain wouldn't get in. So I couldn't see. And so I got up there and I was like, hey, I'm coming up on your left. I'm on your left. And I reached up and I and I ripped the garbage bag down and I saw the driver completely through the windshield and just his legs were inside the car. And there was a gun holster on the seat. But this dude was dead. I mean, or dying. He was doing the gargle, the gargle of death. But this cop was just standing with his gun out yelling, put it down. Don't do it. Stop moving. I swear to God, I'll shoot you. Put your hands up, put your hands up. And I was like, Hey man, put your gun away, put your gun away. I got to get this door open and get to this, you know, cause a woman, there was a woman dead inside too. And I was like, you, you, you got to put your gun down. The guy put his gun in his holster, walked back to his car and sat down at the hood of his car. He later I turned did. his badge that night. He turned his badge. He, in. he did. He turned his badge in. He turned his badge in um, just a few hours later. Um, but he was conditioned black, dude. I'd, I'd, I'd never seen somebody conditioned black. Um, good guy. Had seen him out on the road before. Never had a problem with him. He saw this incident happen, and his brain went to. Yeah, and that's a great. That's a great. You bring that up, Eric. That's actually a really good point. Condition black does not mean it's in any kind of act of cowardice. It's, no. it's it's what your body is doing. You cannot help it. And so like this guy, like, you know, that you're talking about, I'm sure if he could go back, you know, a minute later and change, like, okay, he would. And it's, it's like these guys, I'm saying you, you would want to change anything you could. It's not cowardice. That's just what your body is yeah. going to do. You, you have no choice. Yeah, I mean, when you see a car slam into another car at over 100 miles an hour and you know it's probably going to be your fault because you were chasing the person. Um, and you weren't prepping for this for three hours, right? You weren't prepping for the most of the most intense, gruesome, insane moment of your life. It just fucking happened two minutes prior. Right. You didn't ask for it. Yeah. Um, and now, like I said, I always tell people you don't know you don't know what you're going to be until you're, until you're there. Um, so I, I hate that when, when guys that have never done it, never been a cop, never been in the military, like, I would have done this. I would have done that. You don't know. You really don't know, man. Like I've seen cops refuse to go into an attic. Cause they're like, Nope, I don't care who's up there. I'm not going, I don't go into attics. They didn't know that they didn't go into attics until there was a bad guy in the attic and somebody had to go up there and get him. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's wild. Um, by the way, a lot of questions about Sam Kennedy. Um, they have a, they have a podcast called anti-hero where they expose heroes and they tell the real stories of heroes. Cause everybody's got a story. Um, at my book's coming out and I'm sure that they are going to rip my book apart and make me an anti-hero or something. Um, luckily I have checked every T and crossed every I, I think. So I don't think you guys will catch me on anything. Plus my book makes me look more like an idiot than a hero. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that. But, uh, so yes, yeah, so they, they kind of go in and they try to see what the real story is on all these things. I'm a big fan of Tim Kennedy. Um, his agent happens to be my agent and well, his co-author happens to be my co-author. There's a lot of people in that industry that are not fans of two people. They're not fans of Rob O'Neill and they're not fans of Tim Kennedy. And the right. reason why is because these guys step on over everybody else. And in order to do that, you have to start fabricating some things. You have to start creating yourself as the superhero. Well, you got to so sell, you gotta you sell yourself. You, exactly. you got to sell yourself. Um, and, you, and well, you know, here's the thing. hold on. If, but if you do that, eventually other people in your sphere, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to just let you go about your business and go, God, I hate that guy. Or they're going to be like Brent Tucker with almost, I don't want to say nothing to lose, but why not? Why not? Well, I will always say that like for me, like even with this podcast, there's a lot of upper higher Raleigh police guys because, you know, for those of you who don't know, I got fired for opening up a distillery. I was officer of the year and fired the same year for opening up a distillery, a legal distillery. Um, but I never did anything morally wrong, ethically wrong or legally wrong. Uh, it was just a policy violation. And um, I, I was like, you're going to just fire me. But now that I'm, I'm having success and I'm doing these events, I was uh, opening for Vinny Montez and the guys from the Raleigh police department refused to, um, they refused to promote it. 
because I was on because I was on the list of, of comedians. Um, they don't. Uh, I've I've had another uh, rookie tell me that his training officer doesn't allow him to listen to my podcast. Um, his training officer didn't even know me. I never even knew him. So like, I think that sometimes like people will, when you're, when you find success, they're going to find a way to try to bring you down. That also happens. And, and, I, and I'm, you know, I know that there's one dude in my book, my stories are hundred percent true, uh, for the way I saw them and the way I story tell those, that story is hundred percent true. I know that he's probably going to have seen it different than I did. And I, and, and he would have seen it different no matter how I told it. Cause he's just that kind of guy. I like the guy, but he's just the type of guy that's not going to give me, he doesn't want to see me have success. I just know it. I, he, he's fake about it. The guy is fake about it. He'll pretend like he's, he's happy for me, but inside he'll get the opportunity uh, to tell somebody else like, Oh, that didn't happen. Or that's not the way I remember it. And I'm already prepared for that. And I've already let the co-author know um, and to talk to other people that were on the scene and get the whole scene first so that you know because i just know that this guy is is not going to be happy about it but does that mean that the story's not true no i i still hold by what i wrote and uh i'm not going to take it out or change it so um but yeah if you guys want to hear that episode the anti-hero podcast has a whole episode on uh, rob o'neill did you do the tim kennedy one yet not yet on the uh, fall of afghanistan uh brent touched upon it uh we probably won't release the tim kennedy episode we're about another month. Brent has made contact with so many people uh, in the military that are willing to come on and talk about it. Brent's talked to Tim Kennedy's sergeants, Tim Kennedy's sniper school cadre, Tim Kennedy's uh, SWIT or um, Q course cadre. And all of these people are like, I mean, there's. Yeah, what is a Q course cadre going to know about fucking Tim Kennedy? Uh, he just Tim, Kennedy Tim Kennedy tells stories about. Everybody remembers Tim Kennedy because of how annoying he was. Everybody goes, oh, I remember yeah, that. that. You can make the same argument for me. Every well, cop yeah. around here knows who I am, but it's probably because of how annoying Well, I am. here's the thing is that Tim, when Tim Kennedy says, uh, I was the only class in the Q course where nobody uh, nobody quit. We were a bunch of killers. Every Green Beret goes, that's insane. That's not true. That's not true. And if it is true, it's very easy to prove that there was one class, happened to be Tim Kennedy's class, where nobody quit. Everybody made it through, right? So, well, I mean, my small unit tact. I mean, maybe he's talking about small unit tact. Maybe uh, we're just gonna have to wait for the episode to drop. We're have to wait for the episode. I'm not gonna say I, I will say defending. though, um, uh, the small unit tactics phase of the Q course, you become very emotionally connected to the guys you're working with in SUT. It's one of the hardest portions of the Q course, and um, and you have to peer them from one to whatever. However, if you got 12 dudes on your team, and you have to choose who's number one and who's number 12, and it sucks because you have just some of the best guys in the world with you. And there's no way there's no, there's no ship bags. There's nobody not pulling their weight. So it's like, well, how do I take Brent Tucker and rate him over Tyler? I mean, I don't know. I, I like Brent, but I know Tyler a little bit more. So I'm going to give Tyler second and third, but does that make Brent Tucker a third rate soldier over, you know, it's such a difficult process. Um, and I don't remember too many people quitting smoking tactics, even though it was hard, but I remember a lot of people failing um, or getting hurt and injured, but you know, not a lot of people quit there because you know, you've pretty much weeded out all the quitters from selection. So like, it, it makes sense that, you know, it's, it's hard to get people to quit, you know, after you've already gotten through selection, um, most people get hurt or injured. So I don't, you know, maybe he was talking about that or maybe that's just the way he felt, you know, maybe, um, maybe I'm, I'm extremely well, close to my smoking unit tactics squad that i served with i don't know any of their names i well, st i can't remember heard, a single fucking ever, one of them have you ever heard tim kennedy's sniper school story about how he passed no all right well he's got this well, I'll long, wait for the episode. he's got this long elaborate story the guy he mentions in the story is another very famous green beret that does all this stuff and i on speakerphone that guy was called and he goes no that's not how it happened and it's like why is he saying all that? But again, wait yeah, but who do you believe? Do you believe Tim or do you believe the other guy? Because like I said, the other guy, I, I, there's a dude in my book. I know for a fact he's going to say that's not how it went down. I know he's already going to say that. Um, well, I guess, but if you had four or five or six actors in your book saying no, I would say Eric Tams is a liar. One guy, well, no. You know, and then this is what I said no. to the author. I'm very transparent. I said, listen, this is the way I remember the story. Um, this dude is the cool guy. He's a very cool person. Everybody wants to be like him. 
And I don't know. I know, I know for a fact, he's going to be the type of guy that doesn't want me to write a book to begin with. And there's a good chance that he's going to say, that's not how this happened. And everybody's going to know that he's the cool guy and they're not going to argue with him because he's still there and he's still the cool guy. So I was like, I really don't know how this is going to go down. He's not going to like this chapter. What do you want to do about it? How do you want to go about it? And they're like, do you believe it? Do you believe what you wrote is the truth? I said, yeah, that that's how I saw that event unfold. That's how I perceive those events to take place. And that's how I feel like the story is going to go in my book. And he was like, well, then fuck it. That's yeah, what we'll say. Most, you just, you know, most cops, most law enforcement officers that are in some kind of spotlight, retired or still active, are not well liked by their agency because of exactly what you said. It's a hater mentality. A lot of cops feel like they're awesome, but they're just cops. But they have this super, they have, what do you, what would you call that? They have this mentality like they're the shit. And then yes. they see somebody actually working hard at something and getting notoriety for their hard work on a, on a much bigger scale. That fucking pisses them off because yeah, they're like, you're in my world and I'm better than you in our little, in our little tiny agency world. I'm cooler than you. I'm more successful. How fucking dare you make something of yourself? And I don't know if that's everywhere, but that's definitely you look at, I've talked to all kinds of cops that are social media and I'm not talking TikTok dancers. I'm not talking bullshit people. I'm talking yeah. interdiction guides, interdiction, you know, a lot of guys from street cop training, you know, the, the, that we, we recognize as the masters of their field and their craft, their agencies don't like them or don't support right. them. Um, right. So, and, and I wouldn't worry about this dude. That's some, I mean, if I, that's some small time. That's what I call it. That's some small time bullshit. Like if yeah. one guy is fucking pissed off at my podcast, like, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Listen, I might be wrong. The guy might, the guy might not get upset. He might not know. I don't know. It's going to be weird. Red, red would be able to explain it. What I'm really excited about for the book though, is when they get red. Um, oh, yeah. So we are already in talks. They're like, dude, we're going to do interviews with red. It's going to be part of the advertising campaign. We're going to have them retell their sides of the story too. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, but uh, Red is in the chats right now. So happy birthday to hey, Eric, you. Did you have to get permission from Raleigh P? No. To use? No. I'm uh, guessing no, I changed everybody's name in the book. Everybody has a different name and a slightly different um, like characteristic. So like, for example, if I say the guy's like six foot two, he might have been more like five foot eight or 10. You know what I'm saying? Like I changed up enough. Like I'd say he had blonde hair. I tried to like for, for the, like the key guys like Bruno who's been on the podcast, his, his description's pretty correct. Red, her description's pretty correct, but I know that red's in on it. And like, I know that red's going to love all the stories um, that are in the book because she looks like a rock star. Um, Bruno looks like a rock star, but the other dudes that may not have been like a rock star, I kind of flub their, yeah. Um, descriptions a little bit so that they, they they couldn't come back and like sue me for defamation of character because no, who's going to, one, I gave them a name that's not even close to their name. And two, I gave them descriptions that were off enough that it doesn't change the story, but it, it doesn't allow other people to be like, oh, that's so-and-so. He's a piece of shit. Red, we were talking about when you got your award for going into the hotel. I mean, the apartment complex that was on fire. We just told that story on here for your birthday. Yeah, and, uh, one let's dude break it down. Out, the same thing. So, um, like that would be a story I'd love to hear her to her to say. But uh, one day she'll come on the podcast. I think one day. Uh, so yeah, I, I I can't wait though. I love all the anti-hero stuff. Listen, you, we don't have to both like Tim Kennedy. Um, uh, that I'm fine with it. I think it's still a great show. I love the anti-hero podcast. It makes me sad sometimes because you know you guys are shitting on the people that I like. Um, you have to like Tim Kennedy. You have to. You can't. You can't professionally right now. I'm right. Just gonna, you know, yeah, you I have to be not. biased. I have to be biased, but you know, I've never met Tim Kennedy. My my agent, it's not like my agent is Tim. It's just the same agent that Tim Kennedy has. It's not like Tim Kennedy owns my agent or anything. Well, it's not you, like Tim Kennedy is going to call the agent no, and be like, you okay. drop him right but now. You also work with Nick Palashamu or whatever. Yeah, that's his. They're, that's they're, all, they're all that's friends his. too. So you, yeah, can't, they're all besties. you can't walk into a thing where they're up here and you're at the, like a like a beginner status and go, hey guys, can I be in this? Also, Tim Kennedy, fuck you. They're gonna be like, right. But I've also been a fan of Tim Kennedy in the way that he is homeschooled, and I homeschool my family. I like his survival stuff. The fact that he's trying to make a private school. I like his politics. Most of his politics. I know he's fucked up and said something I didn't agree with um, when he talked about like common sense gun laws. But like, 
you know, there's a big second amendment debate about that. Um, I don't think it's, you write that person off and hate them forever because of that. Um, I just don't, I don't agree with it. It's like, I like RFK jr. I don't like his gun law stances. Um, I like, um, uh, Donald Trump, but I'm not sure I like his loosey goosey abortion policies. Like, uh, you know, I'm more of like a pro life, like let's not murder people type sitch, but I don't hate him because he's pro choice or whatever he is. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I have to like Tim Kennedy. I've just grown over the years. Um, I remember being in the Q course and watching his UFC fight and, and the pre-interview said like, I got used to carrying heavy shit when I was in, uh, first special operations training division or whatever he said. And he's like, and I'm going to carry this dude all around the ring. And we were all watching it and we were all like, yeah, you know, because you know, you're in first SFOD or whatever the, the training uh, detachment, um, SWIC special warfare institutional center. And so like when he brought that up, we all felt like a huge connection to him. It was a big motivating piece for me. So, um, yeah. So I, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to listen to your episode and, uh, and I, and I'm sure there's going to be some questions there and, Hey, maybe Tim will come on and defend himself. I think uh, he's we got uh, this uh, on Monday. We're dropping the. Uh, we have our first Navy SEAL come on in studio, uh, and he, man, if you're a Marcus Luttrell fan, I'm sorry, just gonna say it. Well, here, dude, I've got the guy that says that uh, the interpreter that he came over here won't talk, but he's still afraid that he'll get like murdered for talking. But his <laughs> son would probably come on and talk to you. Let's so the it, interpreter's man. son, but I, from what I've been told, from another. Um, from another Afghan or Iraqi, I don't want to say to be too specific, that's come over and has met this guy personally. He's saying that they they were not like that Marcus Show didn't treat them very well. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> um, he's saying <laughs> you could probably get the son of that interpreter to come on your show um, oh, or yeah. at least give you a phone call. So I need to get that set up today for you since you're dropping that episode. Have you already recorded it? Yeah, it's already been recorded, but oh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a follow-up. Okay. Let me get you this guy's phone number um, to give you some better insight. But uh sounds like it's going to be a great episode. Um, and uh, excited, guys. Well, hey, that's been an, all for our breakdown today. Guns up, giddy up, have a safe weekend. Congratulations to everybody who uh, is starting their police academies that you guys have been shouting out. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, subscribe to us on Patreon. Hit the uh, Give us a five-star rating and review if you please, if you possibly could. You guys can follow us on social media. Um, join us on Facebook. And we love these stories of you guys um, becoming it's, officers and going to the academy. It's not too late to change careers. It's not too late. Be a firefighter. Be a um, I, love this I love this comment in the chat from Michael Hendricks. He says, anti-hero is going after Jesus Christ next. Next <laughs> <No>. year. <laughs> We're going to out Jesus. <laughs> we talked to Paul and that did not happen. <laughs> That's where we draw the line, man. <laughs> oh, guys, we'll see y'all next week. Uh, Monday, we have Uncuffed coming out. Um, five shows a week. Everything's different. Uh, to inform and entertain you guys. Love y'all. Happy birthday, Red. See you guys soon.